and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. This is our final word show from the League of Ireland games, just gone. Um, starting with Dundalk and uh, Bowes at Daily Mounts. Yeah. Yourself, Ryan, you were out, so tell I me was, tell me all yeah. about it. Will do. It was a great game. Um, it's probably something that a lot of fans would have expected from a game of, of that measure. It's second against third. It's a big game in the season. Obviously, um, the winner goes on to, to really, really increase their chances of getting right up there with Rovers. Obviously, Dundalk have done that now. They had the game in hand, um, which they did manage to take it full advantage of and get themselves a valuable three points. I think that definitely the game started with Dundalk quite clearly the better side. I mean, I looked at them. Um, they were moving the ball around a lot quicker, to causing a lot more problems to Bowes than Bowes were at their end. Um, and I think the goal perhaps was imminent. I want to say that Bowes were definitely denied a few chances. It's harsh to blame a referee for a game, and I don't really want to, but there was a few decisions here, a handball here and there, that maybe myself and Connor had a better uh, angle for and a better view of. But eventually, um, Bowes come down the line. There's a handball, I believe it might have been off Jarvis. I think it was Jarvis, actually. And then from that, Dundalk turn uh, the ball over, they get possession, and up goes Duffy down the line, and we all know the rest is a brilliant uh, run down the line, he finds Georgia Kelly in the box, and Georgia Kelly knows where the goal is, but I definitely think... Yeah, Tied him uh, well, rolling the defender, and then stopping yeah, home. No, really, really good goal, uh, definitely a typical Duffy goal, that's what he can do, Kelly. and uh, well, Kelly scored it, yeah, but just what Duffy did in the movement and the build-up, no, I mean, that's... You said uh, Duffy goal, that's right, that's yeah, right. Yeah. and then cross, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Best in the league in that position for me. Yeah, uh, that, yeah. Off that left uh, definitely, wing position. Definitely, you can do that uh, all day long. You can do it with his eyes closed these days. He's um, fantastic in getting down that side. Um, obviously, then Bowes started to come back into it a little bit, definitely in the second half. Um, that is, at least, um, until there was a penalty decision. Um, was it a penalty? I didn't see it. Yeah, it was, to be fair. It was like... Again, it's it's one of those, like, a certain referee calls it and it's a penalty and then another referee looks at it and says, no, you know, it's a bit of a push and a shove and obviously the Bulls players weren't well impressed. James Talbot was furious. So what, what exactly the happened? Linesman. Basically, um, Dundalk... It wasn't shown and how yeah, it's yeah. seen. So Dundalk had an opportunity there running in towards the box. See, I can't recall who went down as such. Yeah, but then um, yeah. Basically, a bit of a shove is what we're looking at. But, you know, it's... Um, it was Andy Lyons with a bit of a shove he actually came on for Derek Pender who got injured I think in the first mm. half uh, Andy he's probably shown as is an experienced possibly I think but he's a good player yeah he looks it but um, well, he did, well he didn't really show it uh, against Dundalk because I remember when he came on he made a few sort of rash challenges he gave away the free kick as well actually that Dundalk then went on to score from because Chris Shields penalty wasn't particularly good James Tell but will maybe argue that it was a great save but I think it was probably somewhere in the middle Um not a very powerful penalty. Didn't really pick a corner. It's, I think, one of the easier saves that Talbot will have from the spot. Um, but Dundalk do eventually get their goal. Again, Lions at fault. And, um, with a foul. With another foul, yeah. This time a bit of a clip to the leg. And uh, Duffy swings one in. That was a great ball in, i seen that. Yeah. And then Sean Hoare. Sean with Hoare, the... powerful 88-minute header. And that more or less uh, seals the game. So Dundalk walk away with three valuable points, which puts them right uh, level. With Shamrock Rovers now, which is obviously yeah. fantastic. It's impressive them. though because they went to Derry last, or they played Derry last week. And it looked like they slipped up, so it was really, really important for Dundalk to kind of get back on track and you know get get the result in that, against someone that are there thereabouts with them. You know, in terms of the league, and we're probably a few points above them now. Uh, but Bowes have kind of been up there and hard for many teams to beat. Um, the only team re- recently I can remember uh, beating Bowes was Cork, so. You know, it, it it is it's a it's a more like it doesn't sound like a very comfortable victory, but if you look at it overall, it, it is and it's a massive result. Obviously, it takes Rovers or it it takes Rovers off the top of the table and the Docker up there now. Now, I'd be interested to see kind of how they go about it because they've obviously had the week off, and it looked to me like their team needed the week off to, to just recuperate. You know, it's been a pretty you know intense season for him especially with Jack Burr playing for Ireland and stuff like that he looked very tired in the last couple of games they had suspensions I think the squad themselves will just be happy that they they had had a break and uh, now I think it'll be interesting to see between now and say the the mid-season break and then be interested to see who adds in players as well when the transfer window opens as well 
You had a great interview with uh, Vinnie Perth after the game and you spoke about injuries, getting players back, which you can watch here. That's Dundalk level with Rovers now. Uh, considering perhaps the maybe uh, topsy-turvy kind of shaky start to the season, how good does it feel now to look at the league table and see where he's at? Um, it, it, it's no real difference in terms of how we felt, you know, three or four hours ago yeah. it's obviously just about getting wins and and that's um, for us that's 19 points out of 21 so it's um, it's we're in a better position obviously we've been uh, playing a lot more football playing a bit more like ourselves over the last number of weeks um, you know the, this is a very competitive league and you see you go to a lot of places you get difficult grounds difficult venues I think um, it's probably the most competitive league I've seen in the last 10 or 15 years being around it so um, you know, I, I think there's going to be lots of ups and downs, and we certainly have paid no attention to the to the top of the table. And it was actually wasn't part of our discussion before the game. You know, if we win tonight, we're back on top of the table. It was really about getting three points, and uh, we're so focused on getting three points all the time that that's all really we're working on. Yeah, absolutely, and it's such a tough place to go to as well. It's proven that this season. But that's seven wins on the bounce now. Um, you're lo- you're starting to look a lot more like perhaps the Dundalk that we've seen last season. Um, the team that can go out and just you know be crucial and, and win these important games in style as well. The players looked really, really good out there. I was impressed by a lot of the performances. But what have you been getting right uh, at this stage in the season that maybe we hadn't been seeing early on? What, what's changed as such? Well, we've lost, um, and you need to be careful, you can't make excuses, but we did lose Benson, um, McElhenney, Shields and McGrath for yeah. over six weeks. At it. So it's any, a heavy blow, isn't it? Yeah, like, for any team to lose yeah. them players, it's going to. And and we've a lot of new players coming in, and they've been integrated into the squad. And we've seen Jordan Flores be outstanding at times. We've seen Sean Murray be outstanding at times. But it's difficult with all these people together. We've seen Daniel Kelly become a real sort of star for us over the last number of weeks. So um, at the start, they were also thrown in together because of because of what happened. But that's no excuse. I take responsibility for that as as the, uh, the head coach that we need to be. We needed to be playing better than what we were to be fair to the owners of the club they've backed us and they've given us this squad um, because I don't think this time last year we would have been able to cope so we're in a really positive sort of mindset at the moment and to be fair the players have turned it around through hard work and they've sort of dig in and you know I don't know people can question this group at different stages but to be fair over the last seven years I've been here seven years they've always answered any questions and uh they haven't answered it yet, there's still a lot of work to do, but they're working hard to get there. You seem to have improved a lot defensively as well. I noticed the performances out there tonight of Brian Gartland, uh, uh, Sean Hoare obviously got the goal as well. It just seems that the um, the machine perhaps is, is ticking and it's a well-oiled machine at the minute for Dundalk. Um, if you can keep this up, are we, are we looking at champions again? Uh, it's too early to say. I mean, um, we're not in a position to be, you know, we're not in a position to be talking about winning leagues at the moment. We've too much work to do, too much hard work uh, to do. We've got to fix where we are in the team. I, I still think the Zerbi's improvement in that team. I don't think that was a per- perfect performance by any stretch of the imagination. Um, Gary Rogers made an unbelievable save that probably changed the game in their favour. Albeit, I don't think Bowes had any other real shot of note. Mm. But at the same time, um, our attacking play has to be a little bit better. Um, we, we, you know, we left a lot of chances out there tonight. So we're, we're trying to improve all the time. We're working hard on the training ground, and um, you know, I've been here. This is my seventh season, and I've never seen any league title give out before. Um, you know, you finally get over the line. So it's yeah. too early to be talking about any of that stuff, and we just continue to work hard, and that's what we're good at: working hard. Yeah. Of course, yeah. Well, thanks very much, Vinny, for your uh, Vinny, for your time. <coughs> Best of luck with the rest of the season as well. Thanks very Sorry, much. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks very much. Yeah, Vinny's a great lad. Obviously, uh, great to catch up with him after the game. Um, obviously, quite clearly, very, very happy with where Dundalk are, and obviously, very much realizing that they are back in the title race. So it's happy to see. Big um, fan of the channel as well. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, um, he's he was very praising. Um, of myself and Connor, obviously, when he when he saw us there on, on the Friday night, which was really nice to hear. Uh, great support from himself, and um, yeah, it was great catching up with Vinny. You know, he's done a fantastic job so far. Um, big shoes to fill with uh, Stephen Kenny's departure. So mm. to see Dundalk where he's getting are, there slowly but surely, I think. Yeah, it's been a slow start, fair enough. And I mentioned that to him, and obviously he's talked about injury setbacks and whatnot, but he doesn't want to use that as an excuse was the core uh, point to his conversation there. Mm-hmm. And I think that's very much respectable. You know, some managers might fall back on that. We've seen managers in the Premier League, for example, 
doing something similar. So I suppose in the in the Irish league, maybe there's not much room for that because it's just. It's well, we've seen other managers, which we kind of get on to now. John Caulfield, obviously, he's gone from Cork, and they're continuing their revival with a two 0 win over UCD. Carl Shepherd with the first, and Graham Cummins then with the with the second goal. But the I watched the goal back. Uh, well, you can see it here, actually, uh, courtesy of Rebel Army TV. Uh, the Shepherd goal for me, it looks like the keeper could do way better. Uh, the way the ball goes in is just so scrappy, and it, it, it looks like Shepherd almost miss kicks it, and it goes in. He won't care. He's running off celebrating, and he's sliding. He won't. He won't care. Uh, and then obviously a great bit of play on the left hand side, whipped in, and Graham Cummins scoring the types of goals he was doing last season for fun. So mm. uh, again, worry a little bit worried, but for UCD in their case, you know, I still think they'll if they're gonna finish. Uh, in the league, I think it'll be second bottom, which means they'll be in a playoff spot. Yeah. I don't. Like, Sligo has started to get some decent results of late. They have. Yeah. Um, so I think they're kind of getting themselves away. Now Cork obviously are getting results against the teams that are around them. Albeit Cork really shouldn't be down there, but um, they're starting to get the wins under their belt. Yeah. The confidence is slowly coming back. Um, I'm sure obviously the lads, like we know Alex and Aaron, I'm sure they're delighted at, at the the resurgence of the team. And you know if they keep just keep the momentum going, that'll be important and. Um, it's just going to again recruitment. I think is going to be key for them when it comes to the the transfer window opening. Uh, as far as UCD, if I don't know what what the situation is with Ferrugia and Scales at the moment, but if they are to go, that's a huge huge loss of your core players mm. um, going there. So it's it's tough in that aspect for them, but it's a massive result for Cork. And as I said, I'm sure they'd be absolutely delighted with the, with the win. Um, and obviously Derry and, and Pats ended one all. Um, Barry McNamee with a fine left footed strike and Lee Desmond with a cracker. Like yeah. it's definitely up there for, for goal of the season. Yeah. It's a, it's a beautiful goal. Certainly uh, a very surprising goal as well given his position. You know, you don't have to be. Believe it was his first uh, his first goal. It's supposed to be, yeah. Uh, it reminded me a bit of uh, Vincent Company's goal. I don't know if um, many were watching the game against Leicester, but like, I'm sure this they is a centre back. Yeah, who um, all of a sudden gets himself a cracker. Um maybe he was inspired by Vinnie Company, I'm not sure, but it was a lovely, lovely goal. I'm and sure I'm sure some of the same past um, players that were, were, were playing so were also telling him not to shoot. Yeah. Like uh, like the players were for uh, Vincent Company, but um, yeah, uh, like Derry Pats, I think those two would be competing for like fourth or fifth. Mm. So this game was important to obviously both sides, and they've just been kind of trotting along between results. Like as I said before, like with Derry, you never know what Derry are going to turn up. Um, they can be brilliant one week. And then non-existent the next, yeah. and that seems to just kind of be the way. Like, yeah. if they can manage to string a load of results together, I mean, look, they're not losing, so they'll be happy. Um, <clears throat> I mean, they drew with the, with Dundalk last week from yeah. from two 0 down, so I'm sure they'd be delighted with that. Uh, drama Pats again. Pats have a good quality players and a really good squad. It's just I think Pats will need to start capitalising. I've been mean, saying that a lot even last season. But they have a really good squad, but they just like they lost to the Waterford. Last week, you know, you, you think that they would be beating Waterford, but it's just really at home as well. Yeah, it's it's just, but I think I think it was the added spice maybe of uh, the fact that the European license was taken yeah. away. We talked about that. Yeah, yeah. it was, it was um, possibly something along those lines. I was actually um, I looked at that game and I thought this is probably what will show us of the two teams which is the better side, and maybe that's Pats because they've gone away and got a result at the Brandy Well, which is obviously difficult to do, we know that. Um, I definitely think that both teams um, are quite similar in terms of quality and also in terms of, if you look at the results, again, uh, let's not just say that Derry are a side who, you know, on their day um, can do things that are, you know, unexpected. I think Pats are the same. Definitely they have that in them. Remember the first game against Cork in the start of the season? Now, obviously Cork weren't obviously the best um We've seen them in recent years at the start of the season, definitely under Caulfield. But at the same time, Pats got out there in front of um, a very, very uh, busy Richmond Park and got themselves three points. I think Pats definitely are um, a side to watch this season. I don't think anyone can rule Pats out of a victory. Mm. In, I don't think anyone will underestimate them either. Yeah, I'd hope, I'd hope that both Pats and Derry are you know, never really underestimated by, by a manager because I think that will come back to bite you at the end of the day. Um, both teams have quality. Uh, within their squads, it's just how often we see them, which just isn't really like it's you know. Again, I think I 
referred to Derry as being like the Irish weather. Um, I think I'd probably say the same for Pats, to be honest. You just can't really call it. But um, still, I think both of them will have a good finish to the season. Let's see if they reinforce. But um, I think they're both two very good sides anyway. So, mm. um, Well, on, on, to, on yeah. to Waterford then and Sligo, which was obviously, you know, I'd say at this point is the game, has been the game of the season. Yeah, I was going to say the game of the weekend, but you're probably right. Six yeah, goals well, in it. So. I can't think of a, well, any game I was at. Obviously, Andrew, our new graphic designer, was, was at the game covering the game. Uh, and he said, like, it was unbelievable. And even if you watch the highlights, the, the, you know, there were so many chances in that yeah. game. Now, obviously, it's like I got the lead through John Russell, and yeah. it was a very lucky goal in terms of his finish. was it was atrocious, mm. and he just got lucky that it kind of just hung in the air from him. He was able to take a stab at it, and, <laughs> and it went in. Um, but then, obviously, uh, Waterford got an equaliser with Corey Gavin, which was a fine left footed strike and yeah. it seemed to be a lot of nice left footed strikes over the weekend um, but yeah obviously then you know Waterford were starting to kick on they got a lucky goal through Mitchell Beanie on goal yeah, very unlucky kind of, for him sort of bounced off his back I say I lucky well you said, you said it was a lucky goal for a no, while well, yeah, yeah unlucky but a keeper unlucky for him I going to say yeah um, and you, you, you feel sorry for him that, that yeah, it goes in off him you know uh, but then, like Waterford again, they they hit the hit the crossbar again with Corey Galvin. Then obviously they get the equaliser, uh, Ronan Cochran with the goal, uh, and then they get uh, with a lovely through ball. Then they, uh, Romeo Parks gets in and, and, get, and gets a, a nice finish. I thought whoever I think someone stepped over. It might have been Cochran steps up, kind of steps over, and the way he uses his body to let the ball run through him was mm. brilliant. Although questions could be asked about um, Dame Delaney. Because yeah. Yeah. I know you're not really a big fan of him this year. Um, uh, but he, no, not but, really. But he's, he's really, he really seems to be slowing down because any sort of quick defender, I think, would have got to the ball first. Possibly, but yeah. he, or maybe Parks is just that quick. I don't know because I haven't. I've only seen mm. him once against Pats this season. He could, he could be. But uh, the way he got in was brilliant for himself, and you know, obviously scores got and then <sighs> penalty misses and and everything else kind of added up. But then uh, uh, Akinadi gets in and gets a goal. Um, which is well taken by him, and then Sligo misses a penalty. Uh, I, I, uh, great save, in fairness, but I mean, it's such a crazy game. Uh, honestly, it was a great save, and it was a lucky scramble to get rid of, to yeah, get rid of yeah, the ball too. too. But I mean, what a game! And they're the type of games I love. I love seeing and hearing yeah. about. And you know, if you haven't watched the highlights, I would suggest you you, you watch them because. Uh, it is just, it's yeah. just chance after chance. Like it yeah. looks like a really good game for me. That's been the game of the season anyway yeah. so far. I think the highlights are about eight and a half minutes long as well. But it just flies by when you're watching it because it's chance after chance. It's um, it looked like the game was so end to end that you know it would be impossible to call a winner. Um, yeah. Definitely one of the games that really makes you happy to be a League of Ireland fan for me. Um, should I say first division fan? But it doesn't matter. Um, the point is like. Those are the kind of games as well. The only probably downside I would have liked to have seen is a full house so that everyone and the whole stadium could have like erupted if, if Waterford obviously got their, their equalising goal. But um, I, I, I am very, very impressed by, by both teams again. They almost got um, a late goal. I was in here he puts in one of the strikers. I saw that, yeah. yeah. And uh, I, think, I think he made a horrendous shot in the end. <laughs> but yeah, sorry, yeah. go on. Well, no, just, just saying that um, again, Waterford and Sligo possibly on a similar level this season again maybe we haven't seen the best of Waterford certainly what they were last season they are not now um, Sligo have not been great at times but then they are pulling out these like rabbit out of the hat wins as well so um, but again fantastic game and really really um, entertaining to watch if you're a neutral at least and I'm sure it was probably nerve wracking for the fans in the stadium but um, I don't think either side will complain too much I think Waterford results. would have been looking for the three points. I think Sligo we got out of there going, all right, that yeah. was a good point. But I'd say at the point they were winning yeah. uh, 3-2, they probably thought they could hang on. Then again, they had they had chance. Sligo, with the penalty, probably will feel that they should have gone away with three points as well. So um, yeah. maybe both sets of fans are disappointed. But uh, well, it made for a great watch anyway, so happy days. And yeah, sure. and obviously Finn Harps then were, were, weren't playing this weekend. and yeah. Probably good for them to get the rest in as well. So we'll kind of we'll move on to the first division games at now. So, so uh, Shelburne uh, with a two-one win over Athlone. Um, in my opinion, you know, I made with Luke Byrne, and he probably won't be too impressed with me saying this, but I didn't think there was any real need for for him to make the foul there. But maybe I think it, it looked like he thought he kind of had him, or he was getting to the ball first in whatever way because he wasn't goal side. 
that the, the ref gave the penalty in uh, the Atlon players' mm-hmm. favour. But anyway, Dean Williams sends McCabe the wrong way and he, 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 shock 1-0 um, scoreline for the visitors. Uh, but then, uh, actually, McCabe makes another good save. Um, or sorry, McCabe makes a good save from a free kick which gets deflected and he kind of comes down quite quick. It was it was a good save. It looked like a wrong foot him at the start, but he, he recovered well and made a good save. And then that was kind of the only real chances of note in the first half. Then onto the second half, then some good play on the right hand side from Oscar Brennan. And he hits it up to uh, James English, then out to O'Hannon, who then crosses the ball in and Ryan Brown takes it down on his chest, uh, shows some nice composure and slots it home. And again, he's showing why he was such a good player, such a, such a good recruit because of his Premier Division you know, experience. And he was even a very good player at Pats last season as well. He'll be the type of player that if Shells are to get up, that he will still be good in that division. And he's, he's, you know, he's been brilliant the last couple of weeks. Obviously he scored... Uh, well, not not against Cabin Tealy, but he did score the week previous to that um, against Galway, I think it was. But uh, he's been in really good form, and obviously uh, Kilduff has as well. And obviously they played their part in the last goal with Shane Farrell with a lovely ball over the top, and then Brennan heads it across to Kilduff, who's been doing those types of goals all season. And you know, real poacher, poacher's goal, and um, knows where the goal is, as we all know by now, but. It's a it's a good win for Shells and it will carry them now. Obviously, they they show good results because they obviously lost against Cabin Tilly last week. Albeit from what I hear, they were very unlucky not not to be uh, even get a draw. But uh, look, Shells are they bounce back. Obviously, Longford have lost now to Cabin Tilly. Marty Waters with an 85th minute goal, which is brilliant for the Cabo lads and I know a few of them, so I'm I'm quite happy for them personally. Yeah. As a football fan, um, I'm obviously not too impressed that they're still on, on top, but I mean, that's just football rivalry. But to be fair to them, take my Shelburne cap off for a minute. They have been brilliant and they beat Shells, they beat Longford now as well. Um, and they beat Shells earlier on in the season away as well. So they've gone out and shown a real, you know, top quality character, to be fair to them, and gone out and getting the results and worthy of being top of the table, in my opinion. Oh, they've been fantastic. I, I'm I'm very pleased. I can't tell you where they are, to be honest. But maybe that's just a bit of bias because I would have gone down there with my mate a few times a few seasons ago. But uh, I remember the days Cam Tealy were not all that great. So to see them on top of the league now after what seemed quite a seamless shift from from where they were last season, sort of the mid table side to where they are now, um, it's really really strange. I don't really understand quite how it's happened. I know Rob Manley's come in and done a, a massive job there. Obviously, Marty Walters. Marty Waters, sorry, is a very good player as well. So, um, John John Walters, brother. That's the one, yeah, his cousin. Um, no, uh, I think they're a very good side. And um, I I wouldn't be surprised now if Cam Tealy come up. I can't believe I'm saying that, to be honest, because I never would have thought I'd say that at the start of the season. Um, I think they've got great character, and they've shown that with some of the results um, that they picked up this season. Um, so it wouldn't be surprised to me if we see Cam Tealy coming up next year. Uh, I still think it's a long season ahead. I would not be begrudging going up and I'd be delighted for them. Absolutely. Yeah. But uh, I just think it's a long season. I do think that after the the break is when you'll see you know, if they have the steel or not to go well, on. Well, and do see, I hope so. Um, yeah. but, well, as a... Uh, as long as they finish. As a football oh, fan, if they do well, uh, I'm worried they're being you know, fair, fair play to them. Yeah. You can't begrudge them um, that. Yeah, I mean, like as you said, if they can keep that momentum up after the after the break happens and I don't know if they're going to try and get someone in or not but if they do recruit uh, anyone new um, then definitely I think they have a chance I'm not going to rule it out uh, just yet but yeah a long season ahead and um, let's just wait and see but I'm I'm excited about the prospect of seeing Kevin Tealy on FIFA I might have started a new career mode <laughs> I hadn't even thought that far ahead yeah. but uh, um, like in, in another uh, victory which Kind of keeps Drogheda there, there thereabouts. Um, they obviously go ahead of Limerick in the table now after a 3 2 win. Mm-hmm. Sean, um, Sean Brennan with a hat trick, two penalties and a header, or header and two penalties if you're rather. And uh, obviously, the Dara Murphy with the, with the goal for uh, Limerick, it was a penalty as well, and Adam Foley. But 
Uh, a lot of things coming out of Limerick at the moment about uh, Sean Russell and the injuries picked up, uh, or not the injuries picked up, sorry, the, the injury he's trying to get fixed. Yeah. And, you know, it's been blown up on off the ball at 98 FM, Jamie Moore in particular, who interviewed him and, you know, he had him on the show talking about how, you know, the club haven't paid his injury and they, they're leaving him hung out to dry basically on 4,500 4, or some figure like that. Uh, that they, they're trying to make out that he has to pay it himself, which is absolute nonsense. Like the club should be paying for his injury. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, he's your player. You should be looking after him. You shouldn't be, you know, shafting him, in my opinion. But uh, it'll be interesting to see kind of what way that play out. Um, they were calling. Uh, he was on 98 FM today, or was it yesterday? Jamie Moore, you know, calling it a disgrace or whatever. And he said he was going to contact the FAI and the league and, and everything else to try and get an answer. So I don't know what's happened or what's the latest on that. So if you do know, let us know in the comments. But uh, as I say, draw the again. Shown they're shown that you know, they lost obviously last week against Long, but they showed good characters come back and get the result then against Limerick, who had just overtaken them in the table last week, but were getting a win. So it, it puts them back into a good position. And Kieran obviously would be delighted with that. And uh, yeah, they uh, just need to start getting a real run of, of games or good results. You know, like, a, like many teams, probably Bray, I know they're playing tonight against Galway, so yeah. we, can't, excuse me, we can't comment on that game yet. But again, th these are sides that really need to start getting a run of games. Um, and then lastly, then we're, we're on to Wexford and uh, Wexford and Cove. You know, they finished two all, and they didn't even jump anywhere in the league. Like in regards to their positions, like they stayed in the same positions. Uh, uh, Jack Doherty in the 17th minute to put Wexford in front. Darrell Connor all goal to equalise, and then Stephen Kenny put Cove in front, not the uh, under 21 manager. Um, Put Cove in front though, and then Danny Furlong with the equaliser in the 65th minute, which uh, ultimately led to the do the game being a draw. Mm. So uh, that's really that. So in that regard, Bray versus Galway tonight, are you confident? Um, never confident with Bray. Um, but that Galway side is not the best team I've seen in a while from from themselves now. So I, I would hope that this is the kind of game that we'll keep ourselves up there with the rest of them. Um, we can only hope for the best. and I'll, I'll have to see about that one. But... Um, I'm a bit sceptical now. I think it might be a draw. Um, part of me does, but if I was being optimistic, I'll say 2-1 Bray if you want to score a prediction. But we'll, we'll hope for the best. I don't think it'll be an easy game. Hmm. Uh, By the time this is out, he might have uh, he might have already uh, had the score wrong or right, so don't, yeah. don't criticise Ryan too much in the yeah. comments. All right. Thanks. Um, well, that's been really it in terms of our final word show. Um, let us know your thoughts in the comments. And uh, if you're a returning watcher and you haven't subscribed, why not hit the subscribe button now? And... Uh, as I said before, let us know your thoughts in the comments and we'll speak to you soon. Thanks for watching.